here's a question for you. What do Nicole Kidman, Stephen Fry and Catherine Kim all have in common? <laughs> They've all given absolutely ringing endorsements to the latest work of fiction by our next guest. The wonderful Cathy Lett has written her new book, The Revenge Club, in the hope it will kickstart conversations about the ongoing impacts of sexism and ageism and she joins us now in the studio and we're very excited. Thank Great you for that Great lovely to intro. I'm back on my favourite sofa. Yes, I love it comfortable. here. We should my have a potty habitat. Tea, really. We should. We should. Yes. Yeah. The Vegemite on toast. That yes. would be good. Australian penicillin. Yeah. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, never fails. This is your 20th book. 20th book. Well, I only write because it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't write, I'd be lying on some shrink's couch. It's hard know? to get a therapist these days. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, what, what about it is therapeutic for you? Well, I always write the book that I have to be feeling angry about something. Mm. And the age of sexism that women suffer mm. was really starting to drive me mad because I could see my own, my own friends being discarded from the workplace, put out to career pasture for the crime of turning 50 and being menopausal, a menopausal hot mess. I mean, for example, the sexism... Look at you, Michael. How old... Can I ask how old you are? I'm 55. 55. So, OK, well, I'm 65, but you, you're like a, a silver fox, whereas I'm an old crone, a hag, oh, a bag. Hardly. You know, you never hear men dismissed no. as mutton dressed as ram. <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. And yet I'm not allowed to wear short skirts, I'm not allowed to show my arms, got all these rules and regulations. Yeah, all these adjecti adjectives we don't use for women. That's you know, right. Yeah. Whereas I think post-menopause is the best time of a woman's life. Why? Why? Well, I think for... Well, you're far too young, but I'll give you some top tips. <laughs> um, I think for women, life is, is in two acts, and the trick is surviving the menopause, which is the interval, which is terrible, where you sweat more than Donald Trump doing a Sudoku. You know. <laughs> but once you get through that, you sort of... I don't know, you just... You no longer care what people think about you. You know, women are brought up to be decorative and demure and we know that when a woman and a man stop, start talking at the same time, the woman usually pulls back. Not me, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> the post-menopause, you just no longer care. You don't feel that judgement anymore. So you've so, got the wisdom and the confidence. And, and it's liberating. And also, you know, period cramps, no pregnancy scares, you've got all that tampon money to spend. woo -hoo! <laughs> But whenever I read books about women my age, they're always sort of alone in their flats, you know, wilting from loneliness and finally get eaten by their cats. <laughs> Whereas all my friends are swinging off a chandelier with a, a toy boy between their teeth. So. Well, there you go. What's well, I like about that? So let's speak about the four friends at the centre of this book. All went to Oxford together. They get back together for a lunch many years later and it goes from there. Women scorned. That's right. Well, the, they, they meet up for lunch. They haven't seen each other since university. One of them was Australian, obviously, the main <laughs> character. And um, they're waiting for their friend to turn up. And then this man comes and sits at their table. And they're like, what are you doing here? And we're waiting for our friend, our girlfriend. And he says, yes, well, it's me, Joe Logan. And they think, oh, my God, you transition. Turns out she got the sack. She works in special effects makeup in Hollywood. She got the sack for the crime of being a menopausal hot mess. So she went back and transformed herself into a man. Went back to the same job, got a pay rise and a promotion. She's like, in a man's world, it's so much better to be a man. And her friend's like, you're wrong. There's never been a better time to be a woman. And then that week, something catastrophic happens to them in their careers. Uh -huh. And when they get back with her the next week, they go, you're right. Mm -hmm. And she, they decide to take revenge on the men who've sabotaged their careers. But they've got to see secret weapon because Joe can get into the men's room. Oh, so let the fun begin. Men you know? only begin. clubs. That's right. Because you've been observing um, sexism, feminism for, for you know, a few decades now, yes. do you think things are changing in the conversation? Like, will this new generation of women start to push down those doors that are still closed for us? Well, it's a good question. I mean, every, every single thing in this book, every bit of sexism is real. It's taken from my life, my friend's life, or from the newspapers. I mean, it's still a man's world. I mean, I wish all men were as, as as wonderful as you, oh, Michael. Thank you, Kathy. I mean, you're so good at girl talk. You're practically ovulating here on the couch <laughs> with us. But um, I'm afraid, you know, we still don't have equal pay. We know that that we're still getting concussion hitting our head on the glass ceiling, and we're supposed to clean it while we're up there. So we still have a long way to go. But I think the great thing for women is that we've got each other. Yeah. This fantastic female friendship. This is also a celebration of female friendship, where the wind beneath each other's bingo wings. You know. <laughs> and so the sisterhood is powerful. And I think things have got better since Me Too. I think those yeah. top water predators are still there, but they've kind of crawled under the rock a little bit. So, you know, and, and it's not as though women are asking for a lot. We'd like equal pay. We'd like men to work out that mutual orgasm is not an insurance company. That'd be great, <laughs> thanks. And we'd like them to help more around the house. So, yeah. you know, the way to a woman's heart is through her stomach. That is not aiming too high. <laughs> what does a woman really want in bed? 
breakfast and a really good book. That's it. <laughs> That's not a lot, I don't think. Well, you don't know which all. one to go to if you need it. Yeah. Um, oh, well, it's doing, I must say, there's a lot of women out there desperate to talk about this issue. Yes. There are. And it's, a, it's already a bestseller, I'm happy to say. Mm. I and I think it's time we started talking about the menopause and why we, women are leaving the workforce when they're at the peak of their productivity. So, you know, it's an important discussion to have, but I always try and do it with humour and, and wit and, and, and warmth because that's what women do best. They certainly do. Um, it's so lovely to have you. Wish yeah. we could have you Always for another half an hour. Always welcome back, Kathy. Oh, yeah. I just love you guys. I do adore the show. Yeah, I mean, the ABC's going yeah. well. Bit of a dodgy chairman we've got <laughs> at the moment. Kim Williams, former husband of Kathy Letts. Do you think Amy Clarissa. Kim is going to be brilliant. Yeah. You couldn't have a better chairman. He's across everything. He's passionate about the ABC. I mean, he's he'll fight for you. He's... He's erudite, you know, I think erudite's some kind of glue, but he's actually a really good, really great intellectual. He'll be a fantastic leader for That's you. That's good to hear. 